Now, the next episode of the Fan Camera model. Uh, I've shown you how to make quarks and photons. I've shown you how to make nucleons, um, either uh, the, the neutron, proton, or even the weak meson, if you can remember. I've shown you the weak meson. So, we have all those neutrons spinning around. They created in the black hole, the Big Bang black hole thing. So, and after a while, these one of them gets to stick out and it's described on my website and that's not of importance how it works right now it's how you can make these models well this is helium and helium is gridlocked as well you can see neither of these uh, quarks can spin this is one solid block and that's the reason is this in the sun four of those get compressed into a chunk of helium. Helium has two valence and as you can, can see these two are sticking out and because helium is spinning those two are, are sticking out. Uh, they have an, helium has a bit of valence, not very much. It doesn't react very very quickly to other uh, elements because it doesn't really spin very fast. You know, if you got those normal nucleons spinning like hell, they spin at the speed of light. This one goes far slower. It spins like this, but it goes far slower. Uh, liquid helium is actually capable of crawling out of a jar just because of this uh, structure. Helium. Well, simplify helium and you get this. Four Q-tips represent the four nucleons. Well, the next step is oxygen, and you can see smack in the middle, smack in the center of it. You can recognize helium, but it's not actually there. I just did that to make this array complete. We like this complete array, so um, by the end of the series, we'll go up to my attic and I will show you that there are more arrays, not only this array, but there are more of them. So sometimes it, 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 the number of valence can jump from one array to another array. There are more arrays than just these ones. Well, I've shown you why. I've shown you these uh, tripods, four pods, and now I'm going to explain you why. Um, they are needed for uh, expanding atoms. Um, a two-part doesn't work when a two-part somewhere, lands somewhere, it can still break off a tripod has three points remains stable and a four point a four pot remains stable as well and if a four pot might land on a triangular uh, point the, the one still sticking out will break off eventually so a four pot can turn into a tripod and vice versa if a tripod lands on a point which is actually made for four uh, for a four part, uh, it remains stable in place, but a single nucleon, a single nucleon, can join them, creating a four pot out of a tripod. So tripods and four pots can turn into each other, and that's very convenient. Um, so now we're going to make the Van Kamen animals the shields. Uh, the second shield, the first shield, of course, to balance, the second shield has eight. Uh, protons in the outer shield and um, let's look at it closer this is represents oxygen and uh, as you can see it's a two pyramid structure and in the middle there are still uh, four of those one two three four of those q-tips and they have a blue piece of tape and that tape says I am a neutron, not a proton. They are flagged down, they have to keep a lower profile to allow the other ones to become protons. You have to know these elements are out in space and they are uh, surrounded by gravitons. And those gravitons are hitting it all the time and therefore transfer their energy to 
the atoms. Gravitons spinning around, hitting those uh, quarks, making those quarks spinning as well. So you get those gravitons shooting around, they hit those nucleons, making the quarks spin. Um, so that's why uh, it soaks up energy. That's why atoms soak up energy. Um, why? Uh, the theory is, well, we have here eight electrons. And uh, again, I'm going to show you how that works. Take, for instance, this building block, this four part. And those things are flying around in space, but they have to land sooner or later before they integrate by themselves. Of course, a four part is not very strong. It's still liable to break. It can break. So, but look at the bottom side. And you can see all those spinning nucleons. And as this one spins clockwise, it forces the next one to spin anti-clockwise. Forcing this one to spin clockwise again, and this one to turn anti-clockwise again. But all four can spin, and all four can stretch out to becoming protons without any trouble. Because this one spins, like I told you, clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. It doesn't matter, they all four can turn into protons. Now, take the tripod. And that's a different kind of story. Because if this one turns clockwise, this one turns anti-clockwise, this one turns clockwise again, ending up with two adjacent neutrons both turning clockwise. So if this one turns uh, clockwise, uh, clockwise, and that one does, they will interfere right here. They cannot interlink like cogs. Something has to happen, something has to give, and it does, you know, it uh, limits the number of protons. One of those three has to keep a lower profile to allow the other two to be protons, to allow the other two to have a bigger orbit. So, a tripod in general has only two protons, whereas a four-part in general has four protons, four spinning electrons. Now, Again, we're going to look at oxygen, and we can see the most, the maximum number of, of protons is eight. Four legs of the pyramid on this side, and the four pyramid legs on the other side, giving us eight protons. The moment one of those middle, the one I flagged down with a blue piece of tape, one of those middle ones uh, join the festivities, you actually get a tripod. Um, one, two, three. You can see the tripods as well, if you look good at it, if you can have some imagination. So this is the most efficient way. It spins eight protons. Um, the top and bottom are sticking out, and those are the ones on top, of course, we got the, uh, the four part on top of this one. It has a bit of fans, but not much. It doesn't s speed around, it doesn't spin. This these ones spin very fast, this one moves around. Maybe it has a little spin, but not much, not much energy. But it has some valence. Well, in the case of oxygen, adjacent to that blue dot over here and over there, adjacent to this one, we find four protons. So there are four uh, fast spinning uh, uh, nucleons having a, a big circumference using a lot of space because their electron, uh, there we go, because their electron stretches out a bit. So those electrons shield off this one, leaving it with no valence at all. So because adjacent to this one are four protons, bottom side, same story, it means those protons shield off, fend off incoming uh, other atoms or incoming 
uh, gravitons connecting with this one. So the fan of other atoms, no chemical reaction on this one, but only on those eight pyramid legs. <clears throat> so now we know why a shield, the second shield has eight uh, valens. Um, you might think uh, oxygen can catch now, can catch eight um, hydrogen atoms, but that's not the case. The moment a hydrogen atom represented by this q -tip, comes in right here, it shuts up this gear system. And those two gear systems are independent. They divide it right here in the middle. They are independent, but it shuts down this gear system, making this gear system in total, all those four lose their valence because one hydrogen atom entered. And then another hydrogen can, atom can enter on this side, shutting that down. So after two hydrogen atoms have uh, connected, with the oxygen, um, every spinning nucleon of it has a low profile, does not stretch out. So turning all those protons suddenly into neutrons. And if you look at this little thing, you can see the angle, of course, between if you create uh, water, the angle, you can see this angle. You get one hydrogen here, one hydrogen there. So. Oxygen, that's the second shield. So at the first shield, very simple creation. Just stick four of those together, creating uh, the second shield. Make two pyramids, and in the middle, add four of those Q-tips with some cellar tape to make sure those are the neutrons, to in uh, identify them as neutrons. So that's uh, the second shield. That's the third shield. That's for next time. Bye.